Greg, I want to bring you in here. Uh, you run a, a, a suite of long, short ETFs, uh, including a very well known the long, short ARC funds. Uh, you run the short innovation uh, daily ETF with, with the SARK is a symbol there. That's short ARC. And you run the two times innovation ETF, which is TARK. That's long ARC two times. Um, how can ETFs be used as a tool for those who have uh, have high conviction? You run high conviction ETFs, it seems to me. We do. And actually, you know, it, it's interesting with this latest development, you know, with thousands of startups and small high growth companies really driving innovation, having received financing from Silicon Valley Bank and others like it, this really could be a harbinger uh, for concern around the ability of these kind of innovation driving companies to get financing uh, going forward. So, you know, with that potential chilling effect on financing of tech driving companies, to your point, that access short innovation ETF, the SARC ETF, uh, we've seen sentiment play out uh, around that. For example, in just the seven days after the Silicon Valley Bank news broke, we saw an 80% jump in trading volume versus uh, the seven days leading into that news. So we are, in fact, uh, uh, on that side of the trade for those with high conviction concern around how this could impact startups and smaller high growth uh, businesses that are driving innovation. Uh, we are seeing uh, we are seeing that take place. And then the TARC ETF, um, the 2X innovation ETF, same thing, over 50 percent jump in trading activity uh, in that seven days following the Silicon Valley news breaking versus the week leading up to it. So uh, this makes some sense to me. I mean, so, to the extent Silicon Valley Bank w w is a whole play on the startup economy, uh, then and to the extent Kathy Woods is a play on the startup economy, these kinds of ETFs, the SARC and TARC that, that Greg represents, do make sense for people who have high convictions with the understanding of what, what goes on in these ETFs. Right. That's important, too. Yeah. The, you know, the daily two reset times, and everything. Two yeah. times leverage or shorting obviously comes with greater risks than investors probably fully appreciate when they just see the price performance yeah. chart uh, that we showed up on the screen right now. And this is obviously a playoff of ARKK, which has seen really strong performance in 2023. And actually, we saw people rotating towards it. Um, during times of uncertainty because it was it's a risk on way of getting exposure to the growth economy. But of course, concentrated bets are concentrated and come with risk on its own. So you just want to make sure you know what yeah. you're getting and what you're not but getting. My point is that what he's saying here makes some sense to me. To the extent Silicon Valley Bank was a play on the startup economy and you have a situation here where all of this disrupted this what happened with Silicon Valley disrupted perceptions of the startup economy. Then Greg talking about higher volumes in Sark and Tark, which are Kathy Woods plays on startup economy, essentially. That, that makes a lot of sense. You would see those kinds of volume plays. It, it does make sense. And again, that's the, the benefits of the ETF and the liquidity that comes with it. We're seeing volume spiking in areas where investors want to get exposure to it. And there's now an ETF vehicle, both long or short, in addition, or two times long and short, in addition to the traditional ARKK product. Yeah. You know, um, Greg, you're also, um, speaking of concentrated bets, you're also a big mover uh, in single stock leveraged and inverse ETFs. Um, but aside from some trading action in the Tesla bear ETF, maybe we could put that up again, and maybe the NVIDIA bear ETF, I, the volumes that I see in these single stock ETFs are pretty modest. Well, can you parse that for us? Why is that happening? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, in our experience, it's consistent with any new uh, innovation. So um, to your point, our TSLQ ETF, um, you know, has been uh, very strong, 100 million uh, a day in terms of um, in terms of volume, um, NVDS, which is uh, a, sh a short uh, NVIDIA stock, same thing. We're seeing um, some, some growing momentum there. But when I say it's consistent with any new innovation, a lot of it is about education and visibility. When there were other new innovations in the ETF market, many of them took a little more time uh, until investors uh, understood that these were tools out there for them. You know, big picture wise, um, I would also share that, you know, we are pleased with um, the launch of the family in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, you know, overall, we've raised about a quarter billion in assets uh, in the fund family. And, 
to your point, there's been a little bit of a, uh, a difference in terms of which ones were faster out of the gate. Uh, but we're uh, very bullish on, on the long-term growth of, uh, of this space in general. Well, it, Todd, this isn't a big surprise. I mean, people want to play Tesla because it's got high volatility and it's got an, a, a, a man, Elon Musk, that people love to play long and short. Uh, NVIDIA is a high volatility, high conviction tech stock. But Pfizer, uh, you know, really, what's the use case there for people getting really excited about Pfizer? I mean, it's a low beta stock. So I, I'm not terribly surprised by any of this, are you? No, I'm not. I mean, I think there was a concern from the, within the ETF industry that we would see a single stock leveraged and inverse ETF Universe. For, for, for the yeah. whole suite of the S&P 500. And there just wasn't a use case for that. Tesla is a company people have in their portfolio or they have conviction on long or short, but very few companies fit that same criteria. Apple, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Meta. But most of these companies you really want to have, you could just own the individual stocks. And ETFs, of course, you get the benefits of yeah. diversification. Greg, uh, on, on Sark and Tark, the, the, the Kathy Woods long and short ETFs, who actually uses them? I know it's popular to say, oh, professional investors use this. But do, do we have any ev evidence, like hedge funds use them? And in what cases are they just going owning them? Or are they using it in conjunction with uh, another strategy of, of going long or short options or something? I, I'm just dying to meet somebody who will come on and say, oh, I use these all the time and here's how they use them. Do you, do you have any insight into that? We do. And, and, and uh, let me share that with you. Just one quick point on that last uh, uh, comment, though, about the other single stock ETFs. One other data point I just want to share is that where we have seen with respect to those other single stock ETFs, we have seen a, a nice pickup in volume, for example, around earnings season. So for something like Pfizer and Nike and some of the others, um, it is notable that we have seen jumps around um, those use cases like earnings and other company uh, developments. That's why we, we remain bullish on that family. With respect to who's buying them, um, we are seeing that it's largely uh, the sophisticated traders. But what does that mean? It's hedge funds. It's a lot of institutions. These are big position takers often that uh, are long, for example, uh, on the uh, underlying stock in the case of Tesla, but want to trade around those news uh, investments and might have a very high conviction short-term bet. And for, for um, investors like Sark and Tark, same thing. These are um, large, sophisticated investors that tend to be, in, in a lot of cases, long disruptive technologies um, and looking to have a high conviction short bet uh, or the opposite. You know, they're, they're looking to, uh, you know, go 2x, uh, around news where disruptive technologies and, and the real innovation drivers, uh, where there's some developments that have come out both uh, economic or market-wise or industry-specific, uh, where they want to take that short-term uh, high conviction uh, bet. Yeah. Okay. Let me uh, thank you for answering that. So it looks like a lot of people are using, the, they're, they're long the stock or long the ETF, and then they're using these, these for short-term Conviction. As if it's a covered call, yeah, like if you just right. just being able to do it in a more efficient manner than trying to use the options themselves. Yeah, good point here. All right, Dave, I want to bring you back in here. Um, in a move, of, speaking of Kathy Woods here, you're also planning to release a, a suite of ETFs with concentrated exposure outside of this big tech, a big bank ETF. You're, you're going to launch a, a big tech ETF, a big airlines ETF, a big defense ETF. I'm sensing a trend here. Why are concentrated bets a, a, a hot topic now? What, what, what made you decide to issue these? And when are they coming out? Look, Todd said it well. Um, I'm a big believer in knowing what you own. And in this market, that's more uh, important than ever. Uh, if we look at the, you know, the largest uh, financials ETF, XLF, which is you know, a great fund, which has serves great purposes. If you look at the exposure in the top five, there's now names like Berkshire Hathaway, Visa, and MasterCard. And of course, they are financials as defined by GITS, but they're not necessarily banks. And the same could be said about other sectors, whether that's technology, airlines, or defense. So our idea is to bring investors the precision that they're looking for to gain exposure to that narrower number of names. Now, of course, there could be environments where you want the smaller companies. There could be environments where you want non-profitable tech companies. But... In this market, there is a flight to safety. People are bidding up some of the larger names, especially in the banking space, because they may be the beneficiaries over the greater regulation coming there. 
Um, and, and that's why we're, we're bringing Big, Big B to market. The others we hope to have soon, but you're absolutely right. Um, the intention here is that Big B is not just a standalone opportunity, but the idea of it being the leader in a potential suite down the line. So again, Todd, this, uh, the hot topic, we're back to this hot topic issue. All of a sudden, you know, concentrated sector bets seem to be the ETF, you know, hot topic uh, uh, du jour here. Uh, is there a use case for, for, our, for concentrated bets? I, I do, because I don't think it's being used individually. I think what people are going to use these big ETFs, the big B for the banking one, or aerospace or, or airlines or what have you, is going to be a complement to a broader S&P 500 strategy. So you own the iShares S&P 500 ETF, IVV or SPY, the Spider S&P 500 ETF or so forth, and you can use more concentrated ETFs uh, to be able to augment your exposure. So if you want more in the banking space, you want more within airlines, the same way that you might do individual stocks of favored names, but now you're getting the benefits of five or six of these companies to augment that. I think that makes sense to that as opposed to just trying to do it themselves. Yeah. And we're seeing this year that active management and actively managed ETFs in particular have been relatively popular in complement to an existing core strategy. Well, we, we, we talked about, of, of course, what you know, the, the whole fang stocks. And essentially, I don't know, Dave, can you tell us what's going to be in this big tech concentrate? How many stocks are going to be in this? Yeah, so for, for the big tech, it's structured in a similar way. And it's, um, you know, the five stocks that you probably uh, know, uh, know and expect. Um, you know, well, your, we know your who that is. Yeah, exactly. Your Alphabet, your Amazon, um, your Apple, and um, uh, in, in, in your, your, your Microsofts of the world. So, um, you know, this essentially it's your exposure to mega cap growth, you know, names, whatever, whatever, um, whatever is the, the topic you go. And I, I should have said Meta will be, would, would be in there as well. Yeah, it's Fang. You're sort of trying to reproduce what you know we used to call Fang. My colleague Jim Cramer invented the word Fang. But you can't ago. get that right now easily with an ETF. Just those five or six socks. Either they're in a different yeah. sector well, there because is Vanguard, some of, big cap tech, right? There, there is a there. There, there yeah. is, but, but it holds a, little, a few a other wider. things. Yeah. It holds a few other companies as well. So if you really wanted to make a call on just those five or six companies. There's an ETF that soon is coming, it sounds like, from Round Hill. It's not coming tomorrow, like the banking one, but there'll be a future ETF that's out there. You heard it here, folks. Big ETFs coming. Concentrated bets. We're on top of everything. That's why I got Todd here and my other friends here. Uh, so you heard it here first on ETF Edge.